We are going to dive in and get into the presentation here. Uh, today, we are going to talk be talking about leads that you, well, you might not think you have, but you definitely have in your back pocket, up your sleeve, uh, all over the place. Um, and we're going to walk you through a very, very uh, great exercise that you can do, not just today with us, because we're going to give you some time to do this today with us, um, but also this is something that you can do on a yearly basis, because sometimes it is very, very easy to forget the people that you have in your sphere, the people that you have as leads that you you might, you should be following up with, but maybe you forgot to over this last year. Um, so we're going to figure out a way to get you a bunch of new contacts, new leads, the folks that you already have. Um, and then walk you through an exercise so that by the end of today, you have at least one, more likely 10 uh, people on a sheet of paper that you can go out and contact that you have not been contacting recently and that you have a good chance of getting business from. Now, um, and by the way, to address that, guys, usually when we do these little workshops, it's just us kind of spitting information at you. With this one, it'd be wise. Maybe you get a piece of paper or maybe you're going to type this up in Word or whatever. Google Keep, whatever you're using, but we're going to help you brainstorm up a lot of contacts you might not be thinking of. So you might want to have, again, that piece of paper or a document you're going to type something up in to kind yep. of brainstorm up as we go in the session. Absolutely. Good good point there, Craig. Um, if you haven't grabbed it already, grab a piece of paper, um, grab a pen, uh, or if you have multiple monitors, get something up on another monitor to take notes. Um, but if not, just that one piece of paper in front of you is more than fine for what we are going to be doing today, uh, but it will help you for the exercise that we are going to go through with everyone. So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, leads you already have that you are not thinking about, and it's going to be a lot of fun because this is something we do consistently, I do consistently with agents um, and to uh, help them with their practices, and I thought it was something that I could bring out to everybody here and hopefully something that improves your business as well. Now, let's get into it here because um, but before we do, I do want to mention the two organizations that are putting this on um, and that are bringing all of these sessions to you that we've brought all over the last year uh, so far um, and are going to be bringing for the remainder of the year. Uh, that is, first of all, the Real Estate Technology Institute. If you are interested in any sort of technology or marketing uh, learning, reti.us is the place to go. Um, if you might even already have a membership that you don't know about. Uh, a lot of associations have picked this up. There are literally thousands of videos there uh, that you could use to improve your learning uh, and improve your business. So check that out as well. Um, so thank you to Craig for doing that. And he's dropping a link in chat right now. The next group is my organization, Service for Life. Um, now, I should mention, I'm an instructor over at RETI as well. Uh, so Craig and I like to help each other with uh, each other's projects. But my organization is Service for Life. And if you are interested in setting up a business where you don't feel like you are chasing leads all the time, where you don't feel like you're always having to chase that next deal, but instead you're consistently growing your business based on the past sphere, your past clients, your friends, your family, people sending you referrals. If you're interested in truly building a 100% uh, referral business, check out serviceforlife.com. It is something that has been doing it for agents for over 20 years uh, at this point. Works just as well as it did. In fact, even better in some ways, many ways, than it did 20 years ago uh, today for agents. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Um, so reti.us and serviceforlife.com. All right. So let's dive in. And as I said, we're going to be talking about leads you already have that you are not thinking about because we all have these leads that we work with um, that, you know, maybe they could send us a ton of business, but they're just not top of mind for us. And we're going to cover today exactly how to come up with all of those people. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start with your highest quality contacts. And we're going to talk for a second about what that really means when we're talking about high quality contacts. Then you're gonna start with names only. And we're gonna do this exercise today where we're gonna go through and you're gonna end up with a list of names of people that you can contact uh, almost immediately. And then last but not least, we'll talk a tiny bit about some follow-up to get additional info 
um, and how to fill out that list even further once you've started with those set of names. Now, your goal to start all of this is not to have the largest power list, to not have the biggest list of leads, but to have the most profitable leads that you can possibly get. Now, does that sound good to everybody? And Craig, let me take it over to you for a second, because I know you know the power of this. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, sales is always a numbers game, right? The more people you have in your database, more that are in your sphere of influence, it increases your chance to get more business. Uh, but if somebody, if you, th there is no bond, there is no relationship in place, then typically your messages are going to be wasted on somebody that you don't have any kind of relationship with. So it's about picking the right contacts to really uh, and elevate those in your system is what we're saying here. Okay, so. Yeah. Yes, yep. it's great to have a gigantic database, but it's about having the right people in there, quality over quantity. Absolutely. So let's talk for a second about quality here, because um, when we're talking about the lead quality, there's something that we use internally. It's called the lead quality pyramid. And I'm going to walk through uh, all the, the phases of this today because we're really going to focus on the top of this pyramid and how you can brainstorm some contacts and leads that are already in your pockets that you already have. Um, that are some of the top quality and best leads that you're going to be able to end up with. Now, for folks that have already seen this uh, lead quality pyramid from me in the past, don't worry, we're going to cover this for a couple seconds, and then we're going to be right on past it. Uh, but I do like to cover it for the folks that haven't seen it before. So at the very bottom are your general population. Um, these are, you know, your lowest quality, lowest motivated, less, least likely to work with you. Uh, because let's be frank, they don't really know you. They don't know who you are uh, and they don't necessarily have a reason to work with you. But these tend to be the most prospected by agents out there. The, the bottom of the, the, you know, barrel tends to be all the agents go after, cold leads, all that sort of stuff. But the reality is it doesn't work as well as some others as we move up the list. The next one are things like fertile niche markets. These are outbound target farms, FISBOs, expireds, target publications. And again, these might be some things that you have in your pocket, right? You might have a list of expired somewhere, but the reality is that they are not the top of the list. They're not the most likely people to work with you. In fact, they are just one step above the general population, okay? Let's go a step further. Now, we talk about uh, transactional leads, okay? And transactional leads are the folks that are inbound sign calls, uh, online listing inquiries, ag calls, things of that nature. But we're going to go up even a step higher because this is really where we start figuring out the leads that you have that you're not already thinking about. Because, and trust me, I have a whole ton of them um, that you can easily add to a list that maybe you haven't in the past. So next is your power list, those who know you well uh, or know of you. And that's where kind of the interesting thing comes in is the people who know of you, clients, family, friends, acquaintances. And we go really to our top 20%, and that is the hyper-responsive advocates of your business, the people who are responding to everything, liking every one of your social media posts, um, those type of folks, the, the best people that you have to contact. And our goal is to get you from the bottom um, up to the top, okay? And the leads that we're going to be talking about today come out of, for the most part, these top two categories of your power list and your top 20% power players. But here's the interesting part. We're going to show you a couple uh, tricky little ways where you can add some folks to that list that you definitely haven't added in the past. So the exercise that we're going to do, and, and I want to give you at least who you're going to target, but the exercise that we're going to do today is what we call our big list brainstorming process. So let me see in chat. Does everybody have their pen and paper ready to write down some leads that you didn't know you had? Is everybody ready for that? Let me know in chat if folks are ready for that. I would love to see it there. So... Let's dive in because we'll, it's a really, really simple strategy, but the nice part is I give you a bunch of things that are going to help you start brainstorming. So we're going to cover eight different categories of contacts that you can brainstorm leads out of, okay? We're going to cover eight categories. And within those categories, we're going to give you a bunch 
of just basic ideas of people that fit into those categories that you can easily go add to your list, okay? So once we go through each one of these categories, as we go through them one by one, okay, I want you to have that pen and paper out and ready, and I want you to be writing down any person that comes to mind, the first person that you think of whenever we add, whenever we add a category, whenever we give you some idea of who to add to that list, the first person's name that comes to mind, I want you to add them to your paper, okay? Now don't- Definitely, Just to clarify Sorry, that, ahead, you're not limited to one person per category. If we're talking about some of the vendors you work with, well, you could put down three different title people. You can put down movers, whatever. Like you're not limited to one per category, but that's what we want to get you in the mindset of. And also at the same time, you're going to see certain kinds of businesses in more than one category, just to kind of give you that heads up. Absolutely. Uh, but again, this is brainstorming, guys. It's just throwing everything against the wall and see who wants sticks, but we're going to help you build out your base. That's the whole key. Yep, absolutely. All right, so... Once we've uh, done that and started with names, we're going to go back here and we're going to categorize leads and assign some quality to them. But we're going to do that at the very end. I wanted to let you know what was coming, but don't worry about categorizing leads or assigning any sort of quality while we're doing this. I just want you to get those names on paper and then we'll come back at the very end and we're going to categorize them based on uh, these set, whether they're a client, a supplier, a prospect or a realtor and whether they are a power player, a past client, or a general prospect that fits into these categories, okay? So, Craig, are you ready to uh, to dive on in and get into category one here? Absolutely. All right, well, let's do it. Let's uh, dive on in and get into category one. And this is really the very top of your list. Yeah, I mean, this is, we're starting with the kind of the cream of the crop. But if somebody is, if there, if you're, there's someone you've already referred before that's referred you in business, those are absolutely high qualified leads that you want to make sure are in your sphere, are in your CRM, and you're really trying to fault with and uh, kind of maximize. So, for example, any past clients who have sent you a referral, absolutely they should be written down on this list. Any close friends you have who recommend your service to somebody else, right? It's not always a client who recommends you. It could be a friend or a family member or a third party that's a recommending to somebody else. Uh, and then third in this uh, item is suppliers <laughs> who've sent you business in the past. You know, if you have that great relationship with that title agent and they've referred you business, they should be in this list. So our first category is anyone that's ever referred you business in the past. Those are the highest, hottest kind of leads you can have because you know they've recommended you before. Absolutely. Now, these are leads that are in your pockets already. And if you're not following up with people that fit every one of these in a category, well, don't worry. Uh, you know what? You can start following up with them today and that's where you start getting business from. Now, if you are already following up with these category of people, past clients who've sent your referral, close friends uh, who have recommended your services and suppliers, who have sent you business. If you are following up with them consistently, don't worry, we've got eight more categories. So let's go on to category two. Yep, all right, category number two, also are pretty high quality leads here. These are people you already know. So if you have, let's say, uh, current and past clients could be in here. Maybe they haven't referred your business, but they're still a client, that should definitely be on your follow-up list. Uh, any family or extended family members I mean, you should expect to get business out of your own family, right? They might be the worst clients, but they could refer you business. Uh, immediate friends, like people you are constantly or uh, currently connecting and communicating with all the time, they should be in your list. And going back through your history, things like high school and college friends, right? I mean, if you have friends from your childhood, from college, whatever, they should be in your follow-up list because they could either become customers or refer people to you. They may not realize you're in real estate because you haven't talked to them in a while and haven't mentioned that, yeah. okay? Uh, and then current and former coworkers. For a lot of people in the real estate world, this is not your first profession. So if you have people from your past, you can add those into the list, absolutely. And then uh, last one here on this page would be spouses of current and former coworkers, right? I mean, again, these are people that should be kind of in your immediate sphere for category number two. People Absolutely. you already know. Absolutely, Craig. 
you know, add to this? I was or? just going to say, I was just going to ask the group, did anyone, um, has anyone so far added a name to their piece of paper that they are not following up with on a monthly basis, just based on these couple ideas? Okay. I want to ask that of the, the group here and, and folks in chat. Um, have you already added somebody to your list, even two categories in? Because I know for me, high school and college associates, you start thinking about it and you're like, wow, that's yeah, not that somebody. Expand completely, really. And coworkers. And coworkers. Ask her and coworkers. Absolutely. So let me ask, is everybody following up with those people um, already? Are those people already in your list? Are those leads that you already knew you had? Um, or is this some folks who maybe you weren't following up with already and you went, you know what? You have a good name. Somebody else. Let me know. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to another category because we got six categories to go of brainstorming and it's going to get, um, these are, are sort of the, as Craig said before, the cream of the crop, the top of the top of the list that we are kind of guessing that people are following up with already. But the ones that we're going to start getting into here in the next set of categories um, are definitely some folks that maybe you haven't thought of before. So let me take you over there. Um, so category three, Craig. Okay. All right, category number three uh, is business service providers. And just to give you a heads up, we've got three pages of bullets in this category, okay? Uh, but for example, mortgage lenders you're working with, appraisers that you've worked with, uh, escrow and title officers, attorneys, accountants, home inspectors, architects. I mean, really anything that you work with in the business side of things that your providers should be added into your list. Now let's go on as a continued one here because people often think about the first ones that you were talking about there, Craig, the mortgage lenders, the yep. attorneys, the, all that sort of stuff. But I feel like agents often miss these next two, even within category three, right? Service providers, pest yep. control people. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Pest control, movers, graphic designers. If somebody's, you're working with somebody building your ads for you, whatever, that could be it your uh, sign supplier, movers. I mean, again, these are usually most realtors think they have to be another realtor. They have to be title, they have to be whatever. No, really any provider you're working with is a potential referral source or a potential client. So they should be added into your list. Absolutely. Now, uh, Craig, you, you mentioned this really, really well here. And it's interesting because it, a lot of times we don't think about like, oh my God, those people are great when it comes to our list, right? The, the folks that are plumbers, that are roofers, that are electricians, that are pest control people, um, like we've talked about in the past. So, uh, and I do want to mention, we got a comment here from Jeannie that says, my entire database gets my newsletter, but need to add former coworkers. Yep. I love it. Even somebody who's already doing this and doing it very well um, can always add and have that extra lead that's in your back pocket that you might not have thought about before. So we've covered category three here. Now these are, as Craig said, business service providers who are people that you work with consistently. Um, any names that come to mind that you are not following up with consistently, I want you to write down on that piece of paper, okay? Even if you're in the back of your head, even if you're saying, well, but they're not the best lead, and oh well, but an agent down the block is really good friends with them, and oh well, blah, blah, blah. do all that later about all of that negative thought and all of that doubting yourself and <laughs> doubting whether you can follow up with those leads and all that sort of stuff, leave that until later, okay? You can doubt yourself tonight over a glass of wine, but right now I want you to get those names onto a piece of paper because the more you start thinking about those people, the more I promise you're going to start, start telling yourself, you know what? I do deserve their business. I am going to work and put the work in to make sure that I get the business, that I get the referrals from these people that I already know. Okay. So get them on a piece of paper. All right. Ready for category four, Craig? Yep. And category four is, in my opinion, where we really start going off the rails or really going with kind of ideas that most realtors definitely neglect. Okay. Because uh, a lot of realtors are doing their, their title, their mortgage, you know, stuff like that. But category number four is people who provide you services, uh, not for your real estate business, in your personal life. For example, your hairstylist, uh, the florist, the doctors you go to, the pediatrician for your kids, 
your dentist, your pharmacist, your veterinarian for your animals. I mean, you can just keep going down the list we do. of different we, we do. people we, that are providing you services. I was going to say, in fact, we do keep going down the list, Craig. Stockbroker, right? right? <laughs> Retirement account manager, insurance agents, okay, auto life, casualty, disability, uh, bankers, auto mechanics, and you know what? The list keeps going on. Home maintenance, yep. dry cleaner, restaurant owners. If you go to a restaurant every week and you know the people behind the bar or you know the managers or you know the owners, talk to them and say, hey, can I, can I send you something? Can I follow up with you? Can I send you my newsletter, right? There's, there's so many different ways to connect with these people. Um, it is, uh, it's amazing what you can do when it comes to that. Sorry, Craig, I'll let yeah, you way, finish I here. I can highlight one that's really a really sneaky one um, is the home maintenance category. Uh, for example, like my cleaners, they know like when rental units are coming available because they have to go do deep cleans on them and stuff like that before they're even hitting the market, right? Um, so you really got to expand the ideas. That's the whole point here of who you're considering as part of your sphere. Absolutely. Now we all know, and, and I'll mention something here, Craig, because we all know, uh, and, and we're, Craig and I are not talking about going and soliciting services at businesses. Okay. We're talking yep. about just you being you in your community. There are people who you talk to on a weekly basis who you're more than just the a wave, right? That you're, okay, I know this person. I know their name. I can address them by name. Maybe you know somebody at a coffee shop that you go into a local coffee shop every morning and you say, hi, John, or hi, Sue, right? Are you following up with that person? Are you sending them something on a monthly basis? Are you doing it in a way where they're likely to send you business? Because those are the people, um, you'd be amazed how much business folks like that can send you, especially in businesses where, uh, like Craig said, when home maintenance and things like that, volume business, um, we're going to get into more of this of why some of these categories are, are so great. Um, but you go a step further, just think about the businesses where uh, they know a lot of people and they meet a lot of people. Golf courses, right? Restaurants and bars, uh, any sort of clubs, things like that. And, and you don't even necessarily have to be part of those things to, if you know one person from them, get access to that whole community. I've seen people do it with firefighters, um, with, yep. poli with police. I've seen people do it with military. I've seen people do it with all sorts of golfing communities, tennis communities, where people who you meet the right person inside that community, all of a sudden, they start referring you and you keep going on and on and on, okay? Um, so I'm gonna ask this again, since we've gotten through four categories, we're halfway through our categories here. Uh, have folks added some more names to your list? Do you have a few extra names now that you've added because of this that you said, oh, wow, John or Sue or whoever it is, is the person that I need to follow up with? Let me know in chat if, uh, if you've added some more names. Um, we would love to know uh, as well. All right, you ready for category five there, Craig? Absolutely. So we talked about All organizations right. a little bit, um, but organizations you're a part of are so huge. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you are involved in community initiatives like your chamber of commerce, your better, you know, anything like that, you're a member of your PTA at your kids' schools, um, you're a coach of a team, you're involved at a local religious establishment, whatever it is, anyone in those groups is definitely somebody that should be part of your sphere, okay? Uh, also, you can take it another step further and anything you do volunteer work for, alumni associations from your college if you went to college, uh, local Toastmasters or any kind of group you're a part of in your community, okay? It's leveraging those relationships for future business and referrals. Absolutely. Now, I know this is one of the categories that folks hear um, a lot about uh, or maybe have heard a lot about in the past, but I don't see agents doing enough work to follow up across their spheres. I see some folks get involved with some of the BNI stuff or things like that, but not nearly as much um, as is available and is out there. Okay, now the next one is a tricky one because this covers a few of the previous categories, some extra categories, um, but really gives you an incentive to, you know, to follow up with these types of folks. So number six, people who can mm -hmm. send business first. And you alluded to this before, Craig, um, but you want to talk people through this? 
Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, again, some of these businesses are in different categories, right? Like where some of them are repetitive. Uh, but like I mentioned, we, like our cleaners give us a heads up of, oh, this property is going to be available before everyone else knows about it. That's what we're talking about here with category number six. So a lot of times attorneys know, especially stuff like divorce attorneys know about a situation before that property is available or accountants or remodelers or any kind of home improvement company. A lot of times they know about these things before it hits the market. So work out, like build, build some relationships with those kinds of vendors and they might tip you off on things before anyone else knows. Right. And it's not, and here's the thing I want to make very clear about this. This doesn't mean you have to be following up with the owner of the painting business or the owner of the carpet cleaning business. Okay. The, the guy or woman who is going in and remodeling or painting or cleaning carpets on an everyday basis, they're the ones who actually know. They're the ones who overhear the conversation or are talking to them and say, oh, what are you doing the pool updates for? And they say, oh, we're going to be selling our home, right? Those are the kinds of people. It's not just about uh, the business owners. It is about the everyday person who is, you know, out there and talking to people consistently in their everyday practices. Now, you can go a step further than that because the reason I want to make that distinction is you also have the ability to get large volume business. Um, and this is uh, category seven here is um, seven and eight actually is large uh, volume business. So Craig, you want to cover what we mean by that? Yeah. I mean, well, basically if, and sometimes this needs some kind of a partnership or an existing relationship in place. Uh, but if you can be uh, the exclusive realtor that works with a local builder or that works at that sales center, you know, if they, if somebody's not a, a fit for a new model home, maybe they can send them to you to go look for properties in your area. So any kind of a builder, developer, um, sales center person, again, could be another great resource of lead that you may not think about. Absolutely. Um, so large volume business, um, again, these can be relocation companies, corporate relocators, uh, human resource departments, bird dogs, there's all sorts of different people um, that fit into that category. So um, let me ask one more time, did folks think of a few names of leads so far, folks that maybe you weren't following up with, that you weren't didn't think could send you business, um, but can now? You have a few names on that piece of paper? And also on the other side of it, if there's anything that you've been successful at that we didn't talk about, like one thing we haven't mentioned uh, is other realtors. I mean, if you guys are a part of, you know, a Facebook group uh, for YPN realtor members from around the country or anything like that, and that's been a great source for you, that's something you could always add in here, right? Yep. Uh, other realtors around the country are always a good resource as well, of course, and groups online, stuff like that can be another source of leads. Absolutely, Craig. Absolutely. Uh, Trinica says yes. So Trinica got some new leads, got some ideas of, of other people to follow up with. So now that you have these leads um, on your paper, you have the leads ready to go uh, and you have some extra people to follow up with, there are a few things I want you to do next. So first, I want you to categorize these leads. So you're going to categorize them into one of four um, sections, one of which is a client. Um, this is somebody who is a, either a current or a past client that you have worked with before. Um, those are tend to be very highly likely to send you business. The next one is a supplier. Um, it, add that little S next to their name that they're a supplier. They give you services um, or business in some sort of way. Anybody who is, you know, referred business in the past is even better. But any sort of suppliers that you work with, get that S mark. Okay. The next is a prospect. This is somebody who, uh, let's say you think of a family member or a friend or a past coworker who is just a general contact, general person in the population, but they at least know who you are. Put a little P next to their name as prospect. And then last but not least, Craig just mentioned this, um, but if they are a realtor or directly involved in the business, put a little R next to their name so that you have them easily in these four categories. Now, now that you've 
created your categories, we're going to assign some quality to them. A, B, and C level quality to all of these leads because this is going to make it a lot easier for you to follow up and do some of the automations that Craig and I are going to be talking about in the coming weeks. So assign quality. A are your power players. Um, these are the people, and we talked about this a little bit before, but the people that, that send you business all the time, that refer you business, that have sent you business before, that like all your stuff, that respond to your emails immediately, those kinds of people. Um, are the people that you want to mark as an A and put them right at the top of your list. The next is B. These are any past clients, um, whether they sent you business or not, and whether they followed up with you or not, because they worked with you before, they are already more likely to work with you. And then last is C. That is just general contact, the general population. Um, the folks that might be a friend, um, you know, might be in that power list, but not necessarily at the top of that power list. Now that we've covered that and figured out how to categorize these things, you want to get them into any sort of contact manager that you have, and you want to start automating some of your follow-up. Now, Craig, uh, do you want to talk to them a little bit about automating their follow-up? Uh, well, yeah, it's actually going to be one of the topics we're going to be covering over the next couple of weeks. Um, so this is the first of the next several weeks of workshops and leading up to our master class we're going to be doing all with kind of the focus on lead generation and follow through. Um, so we're, I'm about to slip this into the chat as well for you guys, the whole schedule plus the links, okay? Um, but for example, next week, we're doing a uh, another one on generating leads with event marketing. To me, it's one of the most uh, cost-effective ways to do marketing and business these days is event marketing. So we're gonna be covering that next Monday. Then the following, Thursday. So just so you know, July 4th is over that weekend. So instead of doing our usually Monday workshops, we're going to do that following week on the Thursday, the 8th. We're going to be doing turning reviews into leads because online ratings and reviews is generating a ton of business these days. It's free. So we're going to teach you how to get them and how to leverage those. Uh, then on July 12th, we're going to be doing another one on how to automate your lead generation. And that's where we're going to help you figure out, okay, how do you schedule these things? So you can just put it on autopilot, sit back, and not worry about things. And that's all leading up to on July 19th, we're going to have our lead generation and follow-up masterclass. We're going to teach you really soup to nuts a lot of what we covered in those previous weeks, plus a lot of extra tips and tools to help you become a lead generating machine. So that's our kind of plan for the next month or so um, of these Monday workshops and then the masterclass on July 19th. Absolutely. We are super excited for all of the workshops that we got coming up um, over the next month. Uh, so we got three workshops that we got coming up uh, and then a fifth that is a masterclass. Um, the masterclass is normally $34.99. Um, if you sign up today, we are giving a discount for early access uh, and you will only pay $24.99. So you'll save $10.00. Um, by signing up for the masterclass today. It is the very bottom link uh, that Craig put in chat there. So save yourself a few bucks, uh, save that cup of coffee or that, uh, that breakfast or whatever it might be. Um, and uh, yeah, get in, get on in early into the masterclass. Yep, and just to clarify, all the other workshops are free. The only one that's a paid event is that masterclass. Yep. And if you haven't been to our masterclass before, we give you just a ton of great info plus tools to take home to kind of really help you get going. Absolutely. We've, everybody's been so happy with all the master classes so far. Uh, it has been a, a lot of fun. That's for sure. All right, let me take you back one more time, go through the upcoming free workshops, uh, as well as the master class. So 628 is generating leads with event marketing. Uh, 78 is turning reviews into leads. Uh, 712 is automating your lead generation and 719 is our leads masterclass. So uh, definitely get in on all of those. Mark yourself as going, smash that going button um, and share it with your friends. That's the other thing, Craig, is uh, we would really love if the folks who are part of these workshops, um, who get value out of them, who added leads to your contact database today, we would really, really appreciate if you shared these workshops and shared the Agent Inner Circle group uh, with your friends and with your colleagues. Um, the more people we can get into these, the better. And uh, we would really appreciate that. So if you want to email folks or share a link or send a messenger or something, 
um, to invite people. Or you can even just go in and invite your friends directly into the Agent Inner Circle group. Um, there is a, an invite feature that uh, that allows you to do that as well. So um, we really appreciate that. All right. So uh, so each class, the free workshops are all going to be about what we did today. About 30 to 45 minutes is where we try to keep the free workshops. Um, and then the master class is usually about two hours. Um, out, usually it's about an hour and a half of really heavy content and then questions and Q and a time and, you know, walking people through stuff and all that sort of stuff. Um, but we, we book about two hours for the, uh, for the master class. Um, and then Craig, do you want to just put the master class link, um, in yep. the, uh, in the chat there? So Jeannie has it. Just did. Perfect. You're the man. All right. So if you are interested in signing up for the master class, the link is right there. Um, you can just click on that link. It'll take you over. You can pay right on Facebook um, and join on in. We are going to have a lot of fun, as we always do. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Anything else, Craig, before we close this uh, down today? I don't think so. I mean, again, it's, all we were trying to do today is open up your eyes to missed opportunities. So yeah. if you picked up a few categories or kinds of people you weren't thinking about, that was our goal. Hopefully we helped you do that. Absolutely. And I mean, think about it this way, right? In terms of, of what your time is worth. Even if you wrote down, let's say, five people, five names on that piece of paper, right? That's, that's money in your pocket right there. That's leads that you wouldn't have had to pay for somewhere else. And what is it now? The average in real estate is like 35 bucks for a lead. Yeah. So that. Le leads range anywhere from, uh, uh, two or three bucks, if you're, uh, the quality of which is not very good. Um, but the average is about $35 to $50 within real estate. And that goes anywhere up to $200 a lead when you start talking about other industries. So even if it's at the average of 35 bucks, um, let's say you added one lead today, that's an extra 35 bucks in your pocket, right? You start adding five leads, all of a sudden that's 175 bucks in your pocket. That is, that's no joke, right? $175 that you wouldn't have had otherwise just for having joining this webinar today and brainstorming five names on a list. Um, so yep. made some money back right there. All right. All right. So before we close down, I do want to mention one more time, uh, these free workshops, um, as well as the very reasonable prices on the master classes are all brought to you, um, because of two organizations, first of which is uh, where Craig is a founder, the Real Estate Technology Institute. If you're interested in learning anything about technology or marketing um, in your business, that is definitely the place to check out, uh, reti.us. Um, or if you are interested in gr growing a totally referral-based business, uh, check out serviceforlife.com. It is amazing to see the number of agents we've successfully helped get to 100% of their business coming from referrals. So we are, we're always excited to help more agents get to that same point. Um, anything else before we close down, Craig? Nope. I think we're good. I think, uh, awesome. hopefully everyone got a little bit out of today. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you to everybody who joined today. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, as always, my name is Alex Camilio. Thank you to my good friend, Craig Grant, uh, for joining us and uh, doing these workshops with us. And until next week, best wishes for your success.